Can you see it? Yes, I can. Thank you so much. All right. Do we have people in the waiting room? We get to nope, start. Everybody's in. Yeah, I think you're good. All right. Okay. Thanks so much to all of our health councils and partners on this call today. Uh, we're going to give a, an, a critical update around our legislative session um, specific to our House Bill 67, County and Tribal Health Council funding. And so Val and myself, we're going to lead today's session, um, uh, you know, to give some updates, um, talk about public comment. And then an opportunity for public comment on Monday for House Bill 67. And then also just kind of want this to be very interactive for our health councils who have questions, um, maybe don't quite understand something or, you know, any, yeah, feel free to raise your hands. And we want to be sure that we address everyone's concerns or questions as, as we kind of move through this. Um, we'll give plenty of updates, but we also want to give plenty of time for discussion for health councils and um, yes. So that's kind of what we're, our agenda is looking like today. Um, and I will go ahead and pass now to Sam to just go ahead and open with our land acknowledgement. Thank you. Um, New Mexico Health Alliance, I'm sorry. New Mexico Alliance of Health Councils humbly recognizes and acknowledges we are on unceded territory and ancestral lands of the original peoples of New Mexico's Pueblos, Apache nations, and the Navajo Nation. Together, we acknowledge the history of genocide, dis dispossession, colonization, and ongoing systemic inequities while strengthening and respecting relationships with indigenous peoples. We give thanks to the past, present, and future stewards of this land and respect all tribal nation sovereignty. In offering this land acknowledgement, we affirm indigenous resiliency, self-determination, and self-governance of New Mexico's tribes, Pueblos, and nations who are still here today. Back to you. Perfect, thank you for that, Sam. And so we're gonna go ahead and start out today talking about, you know, funding, um, you know, for this funding trajectory for health councils. And so I know at least this time, um, you know, the legislative session has started this week. And we do have a house bill number, which we'll share with you very shortly. But, you know, just to kind of bring everybody back to some historical context around health councils, um, you know, since 2010 and being defunded from um, the Department of Health, you know, and slowly rebuilding the state funding amount, you know, for health councils, it's definitely been a very long uphill battle. And to note that it's been 13 years um, since this has all happened, you know, historically for those who have been here since, you know, the beginning of that time from the defunding to where we're currently at now have known like obviously the struggles and the adversities faced during this time. And so, you know, all the volunteering and limited staffing, limited capacity. But I think that, you know, ultimately, um, one thing that we always talk about, you know, coming back and bringing even our elected officials or, you know, some people learning about this work is reminding them the dedication um, that all, all of our health councils statewide have, county and tribal health councils, because we have had these adversities. Um, we have, are still here today. And to, to note that it's been over 30 years that have health councils have been in existence. And so if some of you are new, um, you know, the history of health council started back very early in the 1990s, um, specifically around the Maternal and Child Health Care Act. And so um, definitely that's evolved now to what it is, the 2019 County and Tribal Health Councils Act. And so, you know, I just also want to kind of give some context to that and kind of center ourselves around that because we've come quite a ways um, over 30 years in existence, but also um, struggling with this 13 year battle for funding. And, um, you know, I think we've been in plenty of spaces where um, you could definitely feel, um, you know, sometimes the anger or it's like the sadness, but, um, but also want to also just lift up that 
the positivity and for us to just continue to like remain strong in this, in this, um, you know, battle with funding. And that's something that, you know, Val and I always talk about is we want to empower our health councils and empower each and every county and tribal health council to get out there and to, um, you know, talk to your legislators and to bring visibility to the things that we're doing and the impacts that we're having across the state as it relates to like public health and community health. And so, um, and why it's so important, you know, this year it's different. Um, you know, obviously for the past three years, we've had COVID funding come through nationally. Uh, I will say that we have met with other national health councils and done some research. For example, Tennessee um, also has health councils who work, you know, in partnership with the with their local Department of Health. And so much like New Mexico, they really received COVID relief funding. And um, so we're kind of in similar situations from other national health councils around this make or break kind of situation with CDC funds ending in May 31st, you know, 2024 this year. And so Tennessee, much like us, is also facing a similar issue. Um, but I just want to give context to that because, um, you know, obviously after May 31st, a lot of health councils will just revert back to having the DOH traditional funding amount of $15,333. And so part of our advocacy efforts this year, obviously, you know, is to get the replacement funds for health councils. And so I just want to also make that note um, is, you know, it's it's being experienced nationally, but also in our own state and affecting our very own health councils as well. Um, and, you know, I do also want to touch on the fact that, you know, health councils, much like you all know, been doing the work, boots on the ground, front line to a lot of the the, some of the direct services around intervention, prevention, education. Um, and I think, you know, it's very important that this legislative session that we tell our elected officials and the governor, um, you know, why this investment is critical, you know, for health councils to do any of the functions around operating, functioning, administering, performing, um, collecting and analyzing data and reporting back on those impacts and outcomes. And so, you know, that health councils are essentially the lifeline to a lot of, um, you know, public health and this mechanism in, in our state right now. And so, um, and another point to that is also the investment that our state can make in health councils is that the surplus of funding um, that the state has. And so what we're asking for is 6.6 .6 million. Um, and so essentially compared to this $10 billion budget, Six million dollars is not very much to ask for, and so in context, right? So I just want to note that. Um, and last, you know, I also want to note, kind of reflect on some of the positives this year around our advocacy efforts. Um, first and foremost, uh, it is so awesome. I just can't. I'm very excited to announce that if if any of you have been watching and looking at our House Bill, sixty seven, uh, originally sponsored by Rep Representative Anthony Allison. And then we had co-sponsors um, from uh, Representative Elizabeth Thompson, Representative Wanda Johnson, and then Senator um, Elizabeth Stefanics. But we actually had some new co-sponsors sign on to House Bill 67, which means that our advocacy efforts are in full front um, and people are also aligning with priorities for health councils and placing some prior prioritization around this funding bill. So who are newly signed co-sponsors this year? Um, Representative Gail Armstrong, um, Representative Tara Lujan, and Representative Derek Lente. And so a little big cheer to that. We've got right now seven uh, co-sponsors for our house bill. And so it's great to see that, you know, that our mobilizing and our advocacy efforts have been paying off and our elected officials are, um, yeah, noticing health councils in that we want to place emphasis on them this year for sure. So I know that was so much to unload, you know, coming in and setting some context for our health council talk today, but anybody have any questions so far, any thoughts or reflections? Oh, and I do see, I want to acknowledge Enrique's chat, 13 years feels longer. Yes. And so I do, I do want to acknowledge that because I know Enrique has been part of this network of health councils and this work of health councils for a very long time. And so it may feel that way. And, you know, Val and I are much new to this work of advocacy. Um, 
And so, yes, definitely feel that and want to acknowledge that and honor your comment there, Enrique. Okay, so if there are none, I'm going to go to the next slide. Um, so yes, I was just talking about this. If you haven't hadn't gotten a chance to look at our house bill, we do have a house bill number now, House Bill 67, County and Tribal Health Council um, funding. And so um, I will post that here in chat, but I want to note that um, our house bill has been endorsed, it says here, by our Legislative Health and Human Services Committee, our Indian Affairs Committee. And then in addition to that, our All Pueblo um, Council of Governors, which comprises of our Pueblo governors statewide, so all 19. And so in addition to that, we our letter of support, thank you to everyone on this call, our health councils and all our community members statewide who have signed on. Our, we have a combined letter of support since last fall of November, and we think we have over 500 signatures now. And so I just wanna give a great, like a big shout out to everyone here. Um, high fives, like it's, it's just great to see how much that we've mobilized and, and to see all of our advocacy efforts um, pay off. And so our house bill, I believe it's been dropped in the chat. Yep, there it is. So if you haven't gotten a chance, go ahead and read that. The next slide is going to specifically talk about the ask. Um, and so our ask for that, I think you might have gone one slide more. Yep, there it is. So if you're not familiar yet, or um, but just to give a little refresher, what our ask is this year is to fund health councils. Um, our 42 county and tribal health councils um, with a, a funding amount of $6.6 .6 million. And what this will average out to is $143 per health council per year. And so where we got this number is actually based on some, some national numbers on different councils and um, who are doing some similar work. And so, um, and then in addition to that, um, 600,000 for a third party 501c3 to provide ancillary support. And so in this case, the, the Alliance would kind of serve in that, um, serve in that kind of the 501c3 and where we're talking about allocation for that um, to continue to support the Alliance staffing. And just to give context, um, I, knew, I know that all the health councils are aware of this, but they're currently being funded at $15,333 per health council under state general funds. And so if you think about that and you divide that by 12, you know, an entire year, essentially that's $1,200 per month to carry out functions. And um, $15,000 is not enough, obviously, to staff, to operate, um, to carry out any functions or not even hire a full-time staff. And so obviously this is something that the messaging and that we wanna be sure that we're sharing information, you know, and educating our elected officials about. Um, and then we do have a talking point below, which, you know, just basically sums up everything that is being, um, you know, asked in the House Bill 67, in case you get a chance to talk to your Senator, representative or governor. Um, but on our next slide, we're gonna talk a little bit about public comment and testimony. And so, um, I did share recently that, and uh, we have been sharing announcements, on Monday the 22nd, our House Bill 67 will be heard in front of a committee. And so I'll share details about that here very soon. Um, but we, you can join in person or virtually. And so um, it was requested that from health councils that we share exactly what should, like, what should we say if we're new to this and we don't know how to give public comment and so we just want to give a script, you know, something pretty easy and simple to follow. Um, and so essentially what is public comment? It gives a chance, you know, after we presented and answered questions from representatives and senators around our house bill. Um, and then usually, um, you know, giving time for the public to comment on this in support of or not in support of. Obviously, we want all of our health councils to call in support of this House Bill 67. And so I know, um, I think Val might talk to this too in, in, in a little bit, but what we've been hearing basically from all of our co-sponsors, we've been hearing from um, other elected officials and some of the committees that we're, you know, coming in contact with is that what they really want to hear this year through public comment is to hear from 
you know, have health councils calling in, showing up in person to really talk about the impacts of their health council in their community. And I really want to encourage all of us here to think about doing that. Obviously, on Monday, that's coming up. And, you know, to give visibility to health councils and to bring some voice and perspective to, you know, some of the work that we've been doing, because, um, you know, we're not just a bunch of people who meet and just create agendas and minutes. Um, we are all people who are part of these bigger networks and councils who are boots on the ground and have been doing a really amazing work in that if we can highlight that and talk about that and, you know, let our elected officials know um, truly the impact of, of health councils in our communities and, and the way that, you know, we best serve our community members, you know, all ages. And so um, this is the opportunity to do that during public comment. And so some tips for doing that. Um, typically it's very short. Um, sometimes they will time you, but I think, you know, the last session they did put up a little timer and we'll cut you off. So stick to a minute or less. Um, if you can come in person, that is so great. We would love that. Um, if you can join virtually, you know that they will give, um, time for virtual comment, um, if it permits. And then also the agendas, we will also send out, um, through the Alliance as we get them. And so most importantly about public comment, obviously, is to, to tell your story, to change the difference, I mean, to change the minds of our decision makers, elected officials, and obviously the governor. Um, and so the sample script here that we have, um, you know, when addressing the chair and members of the committee, it's always just, um, you know, just kind of like the formal way, Madam Chair, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Um, and you would start, you know, obviously with that um, and giving your name. It's important um, to talk, give your name and also who you're speaking on behalf of. And if you're not speaking on behalf of an organization, you know, I'm just a community member of, or I've resided all my life in maybe Katrin County and, you know, um, and to request your support for adequate funding for county and tribal health councils, House Bill 67, sponsored by Representative Allison. And so we put a few bullet points here just because a minute will fly by so fast that you could talk about the work of the health council is important to me because, or the work of the health council could benefit our community because. And so allowing options to give your own personal like, story or giving the option to talk about how the ways that the health council has impacted the community as a whole. And so, you know, giving numbers or data points as to what that's been like, maybe we distributed like 10,000 um, Narcan, Narcan um, kits or maybe gun locks, you know, giving some numbers and quantifying that to show um, some of the work that's been happening. Um, and another talking point, obviously, at $15,333, it is impossible for us to carry out the functions, uh, you know, under the mandate of the 2019 County and Tribal Health Councils Act. And so if you feel like, you know, some of these talking points, it's not something, um, Maybe it's too scripted for you, or maybe you want to talk a little bit more and be more personalized with your own story, you know, then for sure, add your own story. Um, and the most importantly, be concise just because of the one minute mark and, um, you know, talk about how the health council has impacted your life. Um, if you ha still have time, you can always talk about at the end, you know, our organization is in full support of this bill. And we ask members of this committee to recognize the value of health councils in advancing health equity and meeting, meeting public health needs across our state. Please support House Bill 67. Hi. Thank you. Mama. And so, yes, a, a very short script um, and it provides some context to some of the talking points, um, you know, that some of our elected <laughs> officials want to hear about. And... Yes, I think that concludes the slide. But before I move on, I just want to see if any of our health councils have questions, thoughts on this script. Um, if anyone wants to share a little bit about maybe they've done public comment and, you know, if this has worked for them in the past. Um, yeah, I just want to open the floor just a bit to hear from some of our health councils. If not, is is anybody find will find this public script Mama. this public comment script helpful? Mama. Um yeah, we just want to be sure that we got all the talking points that you'll need, you know, in preparation for Monday. Joanne, this is Joanne with Travis County Health Council, and I think your script is 
awesome because I, I I had no idea where to even begin in this totally. I mean, it spells it out. I did attend the Department of Health. Um, they're meeting this morning for for presenting their budget, and they did mention us. Um, he mentioned us, and it was really really neat. So it kind of gave me an idea of how to you know what to say or something. But this really tops it off. So I appreciate your help. Love it. Thank you so much for the feedback. Yes. So we'll be sure to share this. And so, um, you know, in our announcements in preparation for Monday, I think we also shared it in the announcement that went out with the Zoom link. So it could be at the top of your email Monday morning. Um, and I know this today we had shared that to give public comment during DOH's presentation. Unfortunately, that was not an option today. So we'll be prepared Monday <laughs> for our own house bill to give public comment. Um, I do see Valerie's hand. Hi, yes. Um, I, I've done public comment once before, um, and I'm wondering if it's the same concept as this to where we're really emphasizing that, um, uh, is it an emphasis of we're supporting, um, we're supporting something, but we're really using the term um, advocation and education as opposed to like lobbying, right? Is that an important aspect of it? Um, I'll, I'll step in real quick, um, Valerie. That's a great question. Whenever, like on Monday, it's it's the hearing is about um, approving or not approving House Bill sixty seven. And so in a committee hearing, because you're there in favor of us or in opposition of a specific bill, that is probably perceived as lobbying. However, um, you can still reach out to your representatives, your senators, um, other people at any time and ask them to support health council, tell them, inform them about your health council, educate them about your health council, what you do, blah, blah, blah. Um, and you're as long as you're not saying um, support or oppose a certain bill, you're advocating. I hope that clarifies it. Okay, so just, um, yes, that helps a lot. Thank you so much, Susan. So if, if, if I'm putting in public comment on Monday um, regarding this specific effort, if I am saying that I am in support of this bill, then I need to be represented as an individual. And if I'm saying I'm from this organization and this health council, I'm advocating for this bill. If I'm using this script, is that correct? If you're saying you're advocating for this bill, um, you are you are lobbying okay because you're mentioning a certain bill so um we you can still like um what's pro prohibiting you from lobbying is if your county prohibits you from lobbying your your um, nonprofit prohibits you from lobbying um your funding if if you are on paid time like the C if you're doing this on the CDC Kellogg grant and you're up there in room 307 or whatever, whichever room it is, that is against those, um, you can't use public funding from federal or, or state to lobby. Um, so if you are up there, just be sure you're not billing your time to the CDC grant because nonprofits can still lobby, you as a private citizen can still lobby, but don't um, bill your time to a, a source which does not allow you to lobby. Okay, so the same, if, if, if I'm, I'm not gonna be there in person, but, but I wanna be there online, I'm just trying to see how I can, um, like the path of least resistance to where I, you know, I do, obviously this is our job, right? Like it's it's very hard not to advocate for, a, say that you're advocating for a certain bill because it's like your livelihood and also the livelihood of your community. But I'm wondering how I can just quickly kind of change the script to, to really 
you know, say something to where I'm not saying the wrong thing in terms of lobbying, or if the path of least resistance is just for me to show up and represent as an individual. If you want to be, play it safe, I would say um, as an individual, or is there someone from your health council who is not restricted from lobbying and they can speak on behalf of the health council? The other thing is outside of that committee room where they're hearing a specific bill, House Bill 67, you can be up there at the roundhouse. You can reach out to all your representatives and senators outside of that committee room and you're advocating. If you're educating and not say um, support House Bill 67, you're, you're still advocating. Thank you. And Valley did see your hand. Yeah, thank you, Geraldine. Greetings, everyone. Great to be here with all of you, especially our health councils. This is the legislative session, right? We get to take a stand for ourselves, our communities, each other, unified voice, in our power. Um, and Susan, to your point, and Valerie, something that I have been hearing, as Geraldine noted earlier from from members of House Appropriations. We've been very focused on, on them, obviously, throughout the year, members of Senate Finance. Um, in giving public comment, just a little distinction here, Susan. Um, would it still be appropriate for a health council to share the impact of why their health council is so important to their community um, and still enlist in members of committee, please support funding for our health councils without referencing HB 67. Does that still land as lobbying? Is Susan still with us? Hmm. Susan, you're on mute. Yes. Sorry about that. I think where we're getting a little hung up is yeah. if, if you're actually in that committee room for the sole purpose of where they're presenting House Bill 67, it's a really hard to say, no, I'm not here to take a position on House Bill 67. Yeah. Um, and like I said, outside of that committee room, you can absolutely mm -hmm. advocate, you, you know, um, and you can tell them all about your health council, the impact on your health council, all of that. But, but, it, it really is, there's that perception. If you're in that committee room or on Zoom and providing um, public comment during that committee hearing, it's really hard not to perceive that as yeah. lobbying, but we are not attorneys. Mm -hmm. And so if you have any um, questions, you know, for health councils, you know, you might want to go ahead and, and consult with any legal that's just based on our experiences yeah thank you susan and and yeah i just um you know there's so much at stake here particularly you know this session 13 years is you know one year and i'm like what 13 yeah. years enough is enough and yes um we're gonna go here a little bit into how health councils can engage in a unified voice to capture the messaging around why health councils are so important in the community um, here in a little bit. But but thank you, Susan, for making that distinction. And the more educating that we can do outside of committee <laughs> uh, with our legislators, particularly House, Appropriation, Senate Finance, and of course, our governor, the better. So and, and I know, questions, yeah. Valerie. And, yeah. and I know Valeria and, and Geraldine will mention this, but after this meeting, you can go out and pick up that phone and, um, you know, try and reach out to your senator representatives and tell them, you know, support health councils. And just that message, support health council funding without mentioning a bill, you know, you're good. Thank you, Susan and Val. And Valerie, does that satisfy your question? Yeah, I think it now a lot more clear. I, I'm gonna, you know, I'm, when I provide public comment, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, be clear without mentioning the bill. 
that um, I'm in support of this. And I'm going to try mm -hmm. to call council members to uh, hopefully provide comment as well by Monday. Thanks. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or thoughts about our script? Hi, hi. Um, th good afternoon, Yate. This is Anna Rondin. This is great. Uh, I like it that it's real concise and simple. Um, <clears throat> and I know the wording. Uh, I was told not to make comments on other legislation, but I was wondering in the future: is there a, a five hundred one C four that we could jump on that would help us? Um, and protect us as we lobby, 501c4s are for lobbying. Um, yeah, thank you. All right, Val, Susan, do you wanna answer? Great question, Anna. Um, just keep in mind that nonprofits are allowed to do uh, certain amount of lobbying and and there are I, irs rules around that so it doesn't exclusively have to be a 501c4 and um and we we can go more into that uh perhaps at our our monday session and we we have also had other trainings on lobbying versus advocacy so you can still um lobby mm -hmm. If it, you know, if you're part, if you're allowed to, once again, um, the nonprofit itself, a 501c3, may have certain rules or um, procedures or guidelines in terms of who is allowed to lobby. So maybe it's only the CEO, but make make it. Um, many nonprofits do have a legislative um, agenda. So you know, if you work for a nonprofit, see if your county or or in sometimes government. Um, both of them have legislative agendas. See if if you could get um, them to either allow you to uh, lobby or would they lobby on your behalf because governments and nonprofits can do a certain level of lobbying. I think it's 20% of the budget. It was just a great example real quick is the uh, forward together action also New Mexico, they have a 501c3 when we start going up to Santa Fe. So we jump on that budget. Um, that way we don't have to fear what we're saying. Um, there's something to think about for the future. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Anna, for that question. And Susan, for clarifying that. Um, all right. Any other questions before we move to the next slide deck? All right. Okay. So we'll go ahead and move. Um, really, this is, I don't have much talking points for this slide deck other than what we're trying to do is um, gather as many health councils and partners and organizations who can be part of our public comment in person or virtually. And so what I'm going to do is pop in chat. There's a link to a Google form. And basically the Google form is just going to capture your name, your phone number, and your organization or health council name. And so that in a moment's notice when we need to present, um, we want to send out text messages to health councils or um, interested partners or organizations. This is where we're meeting, or this is how you can join virtually. And we want it to be a text message so it's like immediate in your phone and you have access right away, you know, can join by phone. So um, that's an option. You want to click on the link. We want to encourage our health councils if you guys want to be part of this. And by no means, we're not going to share any of this information. Um, confidential. Yes, it's going to be a confidential form, just in-house. And so I think that forms. Let me go ahead and change that now. Okay. 
Okay, so while I go through that and unlock the permission, I'm gonna go ahead and pass this to Val for our next section. Hi again, everybody. Thank you, Geraldine. Um, So this is um, our call to action, and I'm sure you've you've all been seeing a lot of activity <laughs> in your in your email. Um, via social media, uh, uh, also via Mighty Networks. I, I wanna do a quick little plug-in for Mighty Networks. Um, it's our internal communications and learning hub in support of our health councils. And um, it would be great. That's a great one-stop shop where we can stay connected, streamline our communications. So um, we have you know one, one place uh, for frame of reference as to what's going on, particularly with the legislative session. And to Geraldine's point, um, and given the urgency of this time, being able to connect with our health councils and list your voices and your presence during testimonies, much like what we're going to uh, do on Monday, um, it would be incredibly helpful. We are definitely stronger in numbers. Um, and, and to that point, I just, I just want to take a moment and acknowledge our health council's dedication and commitment to the health and well-being of our communities across New Mexico. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all you do, for all the ways that you, you show up for community members and, and are so solution driven and connecting people, our community members in most need to the, the critical resources that are needed. You are literally the lifeline of New Mexico. Um, so thank you for all you do. Um, and on that point, you know, as, as you all know, NMHC has taken a very, very strong stand on behalf of all of our health councils. And so advocacy efforts uh, for us doesn't stop. It's a, a year round effort. And the second the legislation ended, we started with advocacy efforts for 2024 legislative session. Um, and we've been deeply, deeply involved in engaging, educating and enlisting, you know, members of various committees, particularly legislative finance committee during the, the fall uh, on behalf of all of you. And of course, during the legislation focusing on the governor, members of House Appropriation, members of, of Senate Finance. And so generally, if um, we wanna move on to the next slide, I think or we've already emphasized how important it is to be there uh, present if, if, if you're able to, and if not, please join us via Zoom. So I just wanna share a little bit about my experience with us, um, what it's called systems advocacy, when we're talking about an entire sector uh, of, of um, a workforce, body of work, uh, policy, function, and health councils, as I've experienced all of you since I learned about all of you, and in this year of working with you and learning a lot about the work that you do on the other communities and across the state, um, you, you are not just a critical, critical partner in public health, and as a lifeline in our community uh, in communities, but you are an instrumental function of the system of public health in partnership with many different state agencies, county commissioners, nonprofit sector, philanthropy sector, care management organizations. I see you at the intersection of health. Um, and what is fact and true is that in order for a state to have a thriving economic profile or high rates of high school graduation, and the list goes on, um, we need to have a healthy population, right? And you are the drivers of advancing and making that a reality uh, with key partners, right, for New Mexico. And so when I think about previous systems advocacy campaigns that I've been involved in, one that comes to mind is early childhood education in the state of Massachusetts. And when I think about our unified voice, something that really worked very, very well with our legislation at that point, 1990s, <laughs> I'm giving myself away. The legislation was focused around increasing the um, entry level wages for early childhood education teachers from $4.25, $4.25 to $11.75. It took us a year to mobilize the entire uh, ECE sector, including daycare providers, child care providers, uh, family child care providers. Um, and the, the, the sort of soundbite in our advocacy efforts that we would, you know, reflect back to legislation was, 
what would the state of Massachusetts look like if all of our child care centers close tomorrow? That's all you have to say, because you can only imagine <laughs> the economic impact and all the other ways in which the, the state would come to a halt, right? Um, and so when I think about our health councils, county and tribal health councils, and I'm always trying to think about it from like objective places, your key partners, your community members, posing the question to them, what would it look like? And I'm, I'm you know, this is a sobering reality, right? Best case scenario, yes, the minimum of $6.6 .6 million funding will come through. Worst case scenario, and this is where the sobering reality is, um, we have a, great, a significant number of our health councils who, who would be, there's a high risk of, of an adverse impact from just that one, being left with that one source of funding of 15, one five, my friends, $15,333, right? So that is going to inadvertently have an impact on capacity operations and, and, and functionality of some of our health councils. And so what does that look like for community? What does it look like for the partnerships that you've all built throughout the years? What does it look like for the community health improvement planning that you've been driving and all of the strategies and implementation work that you're doing actively right now, all of the education, prevention, intervention and services that you provide day in and day out in partnership with, with other entities in your communities. And I think when I, when I, as I'm in conversations with legislators, those are the stories they wanna hear. Those are also the, the context that they want to understand more about, right? Um, and so in thinking about amplifying your voices, in thinking about having a unified messaging and voice. Um, these are these are three sort of communications mechanisms that we are really wanting to have your engagement and partnership, especially in this legislative session. When we talk about number of membership, I know it looks very different for every community, but these members uh, in your health council, in your community are the constituency of our elected officials. So being able to connect the dots for them and say, here is, you know, Chavez County. Here's the membership of our health council in Chavez County in partnership with these key, um, key, um, hate you use the word stakeholders, but key partners in the community. This is your constituency. And this is how the Chavez Health Council is improving health outcomes, quality of life, advancing health equity in your district. And here's the number. And so at an aggregate, we can, I, I would love to be able for us to say, you, you know, our county and tribal health councils serve 60% of the population in New Mexico, because we have the numbers obviously to, you know, to back it up. We know this to be true <laughs> and numbers carry a certain weight with legislators. They love data points, right? And so, you know, visual, especially in the, in the days that we're living with, 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 um, people's attention span being less than two minutes, uh, having concise messaging in a one minute video uh, can also really land in a very, very powerful way, particularly uh, when that voice is coming from our community member or a key, key partner that you are working with, that they get to say, this is how health councils have changed my life. This is how health councils are improving population health in our communities, working closely with a, B, C, and D. So, you know, we would love to partner up with our health councils to see how we can make this, this type of, um, you know, capturing messaging in a way that brings um, also more dynamic voices um, to the table. And even thinking about public comment, all of you, our health councils are partner, right? At the local level with various entities. So I would encourage you, engage with your partners, invite them to, to join public comment next Monday, um, you know, to join uh, our unified voice, to take a stand with us on behalf of, of all of you. Let me pause there and see how that has landed with folks, with our health councils particularly. So 
Hey Val, question. Should we play the video from Travis County just for context on what? Yes, please. And, and um, yes, please. That makes me so excited. Okay. Hi, I'm Dan Jennings, the County Connector for the 100% Chavez County Initiative. Our Chavez County Health Council is an integral partner with our efforts to reduce adverse childhood experiences. Without the 211 resource and referral helpline and the navigation services that our Health Council provides, we would face overwhelming difficulty connecting families to critical vital services. The Chav is the volume too low? It's a little low. Okay. Travis County Health Council hosts the Yearly Health Expo. Last year, connecting over 1,800 residents to preventative care and organizations that are dedicated to improving the lives of our families. And without our Health Council, we would lose a backbone organization that has been instrumental in implementing programs aimed at preventing suicide and youth homicide in our county. Only through adequate funding will these programs continue and expand to meet the increasing needs that our residents face. Thank you for sharing that, Gerilyn, and a big thank you to Dan Jennings, who always mobilizes very, very quickly <laughs> whenever. Um, we need his support. Yes, Pamela, we're happy to share it. Um, if you see in your inbox, today's calls to action included um, uh, this testimonial from Dan, and we will continue to, to share that. And of course, um, now that you have that frame of reference, as I was mentioning, you know, enlisting your partners uh, across your communities um, in, in seeing if they would be willing to capture one minute testimonial much much like this one in the same spirit or and or uh, join us for public comment um, during testimony much like we're going to be providing on Monday at the at the state capitol. Geraldine, do you want to do the screen share again or Rebecca? I think there were a couple of points I may have missed at the at the end of the slide. And I know Zoom can be very challenging at times. Um, you know, I'm always, always, always open to feedback. Our team is, and um, you know, this is in support of our health council. So let us know. Let us know how it's landing with you. Let us know if you have ideas, if you have questions, um, if if it's landing well, if it's landing <laughs> negative to negatively. Um, you know whether in the chat or a little emoji or verbally or later, uh, feel free to you know, reach out to us as well. Um, Sam uh, is our, our communications um, person here at NMHC leading all of our calls to action and uh, sending them in a timely manner. And I think when I, when I think about communications and creating that presence and that unified voice in support of health councils, a lot of us have social media presence out there, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, uh, TikTok, um, LinkedIn. Um, so we would really love it if you would drop it in the chat, um, your, your social media uh, handles or hashtags. Or, um, and so that we can continue to expand that reach um, through our social media um, uh, efforts, our communication efforts. Any questions, my friends? So um, if there are none at this time, Let's uh, move forward to the next slide. And back to you, Geraldine. Thank you, everyone. Nice. Thanks, Val. By chance, can you share the poll? Are you ask you're asking me? Okay. Yes, please. Okay, here we go. 
All right. So we're, we've got seven minutes left and I think we just want to spend some time focusing on any reflections. Um, there are six questions that popped up in the poll and we don't want to do breakout rooms or big discussion just because we might, some might prefer anonymous answers. <laughs> and so first question is what's working in regards to NMHC's advocacy efforts. If you have any thoughts, we would love to hear it again. Uh, the Alliance and our staff are always looking on ways to improve our messaging or the way that, you know, um, we're, the way that we're doing our advocacy efforts. Um, question number two, what's not working in regards to NMHC's efforts? And three, if you engage with any advocacy efforts for health council funding, maybe that's signing the letter of support, gathering in-person signatures, um, maybe you've met with a legislator, uh, maybe you've done some education, maybe you've rallied community members to do some public comment. Um, number four is if you've contacted your representative or senator, and then if we do have time, we have questions five and six, but really we're looking at impact and sustainability beyond May, 2024. And so we trying to gather some data points in preparation for Monday. Um, so I will just kind of give people some time to answer. It's a poll that just popped up on your screen now through, through Zoom. Perfect. Okay, so I guess will we give people time to answer? Anybody having issues accessing the poll? So I did click issue. Okay, okay, there seems to be, okay, there it is. There is, um, okay, now it's, uh, yeah, anyways, tracking the, Oh, so we're getting submissions. Mm -hmm. Nice. Thank you. Okay. And then also happy to announce we've had some people sign up for public comment from some little shout outs, Chavez County, Otero County, McKinley Health Alliance, Chavez, uh, another one from Chavez County, San, San Domingo Pueblo, and Harding County. So a little shout out to those who signed up for public comment. Um And how is the poll looking, Val? We are at 8%. Okay. And Gerilyn, um, I know something that we talked about because you've been with NMHC, I think four years now. Um, and we have talked about how, what you've had seen different in terms of what our advocacy uh, efforts have rendered this year than, than um, previous year. Maybe you can share a little bit of that, your experience while folks take the time to complete and submit this, the little poll. What do you think? Yeah, I can touch a bit about on that. So yeah, I've been here for four years. Uh, I think for like the first year was like an intern. And so my capacity is very limited in, in some of this work, but um, yeah, differences for sure this year. I want to say first and foremost that Val is so <laughs> relentless. <laughs> and I think having the leadership around that and not taking no for an answer. And um, I guess in the, in the way of uh, um, being relentless and like getting to a elected official or somebody after a meeting, um, constantly going to the governor's office. And so I feel like that presence there is definitely um, noticed. Um, and we do hear that a lot is that our advocacy efforts are paying off. Um, we are hearing from more elected officials this year and those signing on to co-sponsor. And then in addition to that, I think it's been really important to, um, well, I've really seen the differences in the way that health councils are engaging. And what I mean by that is um, maybe over the years, it had been a lot of the same people over and over. 
And so this year, it's really nice to see that we have new health council members who are interested in doing public comment or doing testimony alongside of us. And so it's nice to see the rotation of different health council members and the representation um, during in those spaces. And um, yeah, no, it's all it's all been really great. And um, compared to last year and the few years back, it's been a bunch of positive feedback from elected officials saying that our work is paying off. And that um, even our Patrick Allen from DOH, the secretary, is even hearing from elected official elected officials more than he has, um, not more than he has because this is his first year, but he's been hearing, you know, from elected officials and gov um, senators and representatives from the different committees talking to him offline about health council funding. And so we do see that playing off too as well. And um yeah, no, I think that we have been really relentless. And I just want to note that again, because we've been exploring every avenue and every advocacy effort um, this year, for sure, for Health Council funding. Anything else you want to add, Val? Yeah, thank you, Gerilyn. Um, yeah, taking no, <laughs> we don't take no for an answer. And example would be with legislative finance during uh, committee meet, uh, interim session, you know, submitting three, four requests to present during interim session and, you know, uh, being denied time, time and time again. But uh, Geraldine and I and, and Susan and, and uh, Debbie and many others, um, you know, we, Chris Hudson, our co-chairs, um, we decided to take it upon ourselves. Okay, you're not going to give us 15 minutes to present during interim session. We're going to schedule an hour with each of you so that we can educate you as to the critical work of health councils and the impact they're having in improving, uh, you know, population health in their communities. Um, and that's been part of that, um, you know, support that we're seeing now through the legislative session, people signing on as co-sponsors to, to our funding bill. And that is a huge win, my friends. And, and, we haven't stopped, we continue, and we will not stop advocating for all of you. So um, yeah, it's been, it, it is a true honor to be here in, in service and support of all of you. Thank you. Back to you, Geraldine. All right, so I see and we've reached 101. How's we're the at 13%, by the way, on the poll. Do we have, how many submissions is that? <laughs> Three. Three, oh no, okay. So since we just got three submissions, I I don't know, we would love more feedback, but you know, as always, we can always connect offline on ways to improve our messaging. Maybe if you just need support on how to do public comment or any other things related to advocacy, we'd be happy to hop on Zoom or a phone call with, with any of our health councils or partners. So um, yeah, that concludes today's session. I hope it was helpful, informative, and I hope that we can get plenty of representation and participation at Monday's um, public comment in person or virtually. So we'll be sure to share all of the, the details for that um, today and Monday. So I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. And uh, yeah, again, we'll see you Monday. <laughs> thank, thank, you, thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take good care. Okay.